Hello and welcome again to this special edition of Capital Dateline. I'm your host, Brad Swanson. We are once again coming to you just a few blocks from Florida's capital. I am joined by three of the public affairs leaders in the state of Florida, and we're going to go ahead and introduce these fine ladies. How are you today? We're great. All Thank right, you. so yeah. first we're going to start off. I'm going to introduce Christina Johnson. You run a, a firm called On3 Public Relations. You're based in Tallahassee. You've been at the, this for 30 years in this game. Uh, you've worked for everyone from the Florida Senate to DBPR, and uh, you now represent companies like Uber and Florida Competes and the Florida Medical Association. So welcome, Christina. Thank you. Glad Good you're here. here. All right, next is Alia Faraj Johnson, a long-term player in this game. I first met you when you were working under the Jeb Bush yep, administration. That's when we met. But now you're with one of the global leaders, Hillen Knowlton. You're a senior VP, and you uh, are specializing in their issue campaigns and crisis communication and, and the health and insurance sectors. And uh, we're just uh, grateful to have you on Thanks here. Thanks for having us Look forward here. to hearing your thoughts. And Sarah Bascom. Uh, uh, you run Bascom Communications and Consulting, and, and you've been at this game for 17 years. That, that, yes. That's amazing. That's amazing. Okay, so um, you are now working with uh, the Associated Industries of Florida, one of Florida's leading business associations. Uh, you serve uh, AT&T and the Everglades Foundation, Anheuser-Busch. Publix, Draft King, among others, just the small companies. Just that's, the small that's all you're playing. Yeah, it's mom and pop. On. All right. Well, well, the episode's the messengers. You three clearly have been at the game of messaging some of the the leading, most controversial topics, and and you help the legislature to understand your clients' point of view. So we're going to jump in and talk about this session and maybe some past issues and really look at at what makes the difference. So we're going to jump right in. Okay. So let's start with how the message gets crafted because because for for such a long time that message was was based upon kind of an old formula but now we have social media and so social media for us for sure has changed the game but how is it changing the way you communicate your messages in this space it's almost a bifurcated audience you're reaching different people so so who wants to start on social media Sarah? Uh, sure. Okay, okay. Christina, go ahead. Well, uh, I tell you, it's it's uh, we find now today about seventy percent of adults are on some type of social mm -hmm. media platform. Uh, Facebook coming in first place, and Instagram probably second among among most demographics. So. Of that 70%, you have probably three quarters of Facebook users and probably half of Instagram users who visit that platform each and every day. So you have to be where they are, or you know where they are, and so that's where you, that's where you need to be in getting your message. All right. right. So so let me stop there because you mentioned two of the biggies, but you're not mentioning the one that we kind of grew up with, which was Twitter, which was the first immediate one. I mean, mm -hmm. is that is that out of date, or are you guys still finding heavy usage? I don't think yeah. it's yeah. out of date. Yeah. Yeah. I think what Twitter and a lot of it with Facebook does, as Christina said, is it makes it almost immediate. Yep. Mm -hmm. So before we had a news cycle, you got a phone call, you had a little bit of time to answer. Now they may tweet their question before you even get it. Mm -hmm. And you okay. don't have much time to sit around and say, let's think through the next step. What happens if we do this? So it's almost to where you have to move quickly. But mm -hmm. sometimes if you move too quickly to keep up with Twitter and Facebook, you can end up yeah, in a problem. I mean, yeah. I mean, the public is just consuming news on a regular ba basis right now. The cadence is like every second on the second. I mean, so when you have a client that decides to hold back and think through the messaging, you're losing valuable time. You need to tweet back or respond back to a reporter using many of these platforms, digital platforms. So, so that's what we find ourselves talking to our clients about these days is, you know, getting out there quickly, strategically, very surgically. Right so that you're responsive. Well, well, and let's stay on this topic, because in the past, general counsels, you know, would just shut the process down, but, but, oh, but Twitter and these media messages involved. are almost <laughs> disposable. It's the news cycle and the memory is so short that, you know, it might not be perfectly and fully granular and on point, but you gotta hit back and you gotta hit back fast, yeah. right? We ran mm -hmm. into those challenges when I worked in Governor Bush's office. So we worked very closely with the general counsel's office, but we found sort of middle ground. So there's a way to respond to a legal issue without really saying anything right. at all. Right. And, and so that's the trick. That's that's the nuance that you have right. to try to grab. Right. Well, with well, hoping they don't lawyer yeah. it up, yeah. well, as they like to do. Well, as we, before we started, you said you're not gonna get your, all your tricks out of, out of the bag or let them out of the bag, but I fully expect that, ladies. Okay, all right, so let's move off. So Social media, it's changing the game, it's reaching all the audiences. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about some of the issues and tactics that, that stood out to you this session and uh, what was interesting or, or what made the difference. You know, for me, I was fascinated <coughs> by the EFI Visit Florida conversation. I watched that. There was such disciplined messaging. Um, I think they used all mediums. They used TV, they used um, news conferences, they used press releases, Facebook, Twitter. 
Um, it was really fascinating watching, you know, the governor of the governor's office and watching the speaker and um, including um, EFI and Visit Florida leaders speaking about the issue. Yeah, so you, that yeah. kept us engaged. I mean, that was just a very crucial funding issue. Well, and what did you think? I mean, usually the agency head will sit on the sideline, but but Mike Grissom, who is the interim CEO, yes. mm -hmm. just fully engaged in that process, and so did their messaging team. I mean, have you seen something like that before? Or how, how effective was that? When you're in preservation yeah. mode, yeah. you have yeah. to. Visit Florida, yeah. I thought the, the, the new head that brought in, he was Ken, amazing. Ken Lawson Ken did was, a phenomenal job. He writer. was, I mean, even when you turn up on committee and you watch and say, I'm actually gonna watch this because he was so he was so animated and, and so engaging. into it yep. and even members we heard afterwards would say to the reporters we, I wasn't really sure where I was until I heard him speak right. so that goes to show you that all of these tactics still work but the way you present what you yeah. say you have to be likable you have to be trustworthy that still makes all of these tactics work the right or messengers. not exactly yeah. and I, I think you have to just as you said uh, be on all those social media platforms I mean traditional media electronic media but also this was a very interesting issue because it was Republicans against Republicans yeah. And I know we have we all have campaign backgrounds, but sometimes these are partisan issues. But you saw Republicans against Republicans and uh, on, on pro-economic development issues and things. And this this was very interesting to watch. And then when all was said and done, you know, most everybody came back together and money was available. Yeah. And uh, it, it's it is Solid what it negotiations. is. Negotiations. Right. Right. <laughs> right. But the gloves were completely off. Yeah, and they were. Uh, the were messengers hard to watch. had to. Yeah, right. it was but ultimately, combat. everybody stood together, shoulder to shoulder, right. which I found to be very interesting. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. So. So economic development, it's a staple of, of Florida conversations in politics and policy, but, but let's talk about one that's new, right? So, so marijuana, right? When we grew up, <laughs> this was the festival in college that people would sort of sneak down to and see what those people were talking about, but now this is a mainstream business. They've been after it in Florida for, for many years. You know, previous years weren't successful, but this year they were. What, what was the difference? Well, I would say they became successful at the end. Mm -hmm. It did not yeah. look very good. Mm -hmm. It was a very bumpy mm -hmm. start, and, and I think on that and together, all, all, all three of us all did. Of us worked on on that but issue. so yeah. it came to an end at in a special session. But I don't think it actually went very well to begin with. Mm -hmm. I think when you've got any type of an environment like this, especially new players mm -hmm. and new, it's almost like gaming. If everybody gets, you know, if I get something, you get something. If I get nothing, yep. you get nothing. Mm -hmm. And I think they were coming in, unfortunately, with the same type of dialogue. So in the end, they went forward. What finally got it there? I think a lot of it is politics and publicity. And John Morgan got involved I, there I at the end. And He's he a did, force to reckon with. And he sort of changed the way he messaged because he made it easy in 2014 um, when we were fighting the constitutional amendment. Because right. it was but, about him. But because it was mm -hmm. more about him, I think it changed. The messengers changed. You know, he had his army of angels. They were talking about, you know, how medical marijuana would help people that were terminally ill, that, that needed some sort of relief. And ultimately, I think it was the voters. I mean, it was 72% plus, so right. you can't really fight that. It was a how do we do it versus yep. a how whether do we, we do it, it or not. Right. right. And and I, it, it, yeah, and, and a lot of the, the same messages were, were from last time to this time. It, it's not, there's nothing medical about marijuana. Mm -hmm. uh, sheriffs were against it, Florida yeah. Medical Association was against That's it. I mean, good. nothing really changed. I think it was the national perception that, uh, well, other states have passed it. And, they and this problems. is only for medicinal yeah. purposes, even though it's not proven. But uh, now you have discussions about making it recreational. Right. And that's what we talked about right. uh, in 2016. It's like, you're going to go down that slippery slope. So right. it, this hasn't even been implemented to the fullest, and they're already yeah, talking about recreational. Right. Well, yeah. and, and that's a great point because, you know, you, you look at that, and, and in my previous role, I, I did a lot of research on, on the medical marijuana deployments in Colorado and the vote that's changing and things yeah. like mm -hmm. that, right? So it was a political issue for so long. But, but now it seems that the, the proponents are marching down that world, but you still have the opponents of it saying it's not medical, it's marijuana for medical use. And right. then the proponents are like, no, it's medical marijuana. So, mm -hmm. so you have those messages still just competing every day and in the gonna Capitol. And that's going to continue. Yep. Yeah. That's yes. going to continue yes. no matter where it is. It is a complex goes. issue right. and it is going to be, I think, caught yeah. up in who, the courts. Who would have thought we, we would yes. be here today talking about this as an issue and not, you know, uh, something to abandon. So, I mean, mm -hmm, it's just crazy. Mm -hmm. So, okay, well, I think we're getting close on time. So, so let me do one quick uh, rapid fire question um, on uh, examples of debates. So, so you got two opponents. So, when we come back after the break, it, we'll, let, let's start now. Who are a couple of two diametrically opposed opponents? Uh, well, one issue we worked with was uh, Florida Competes, the Florida mm -hmm. Competitive Workforce Act. We had Fortune 500 companies, uh, major employers, 60% uh, of cities and counties that support um, these LGBT 
issues. Uh, it's an economic development issue. And uh, we had a hearing in 2016. Uh, it uh, it uh, died in the Senate committee, 5-5 tied vote. This year we didn't even get a hearing. Uh, it, it depends on leadership, uh, but when you have a fortune, you know, Fortune 500 companies, small businesses, cities and counties, uh, uh, against the fact that you can be fired uh, from your job or denied housing or public accommodations simply because you're LGBT, is is a wrong message for tourism, economic development, and uh, and and civil. It's a civil rights issue. So. Uh, that's an issue that, that has come uh, and gone these last couple of years. Some years we get a hearing, some years we don't, but it'll be back. It'll be another issue. And, and, and the opponents are traditional, uh, morally focused, uh, or is, is that the, the argument against, or is it, it, it a is, business but, issue? Uh, or are we well, when we have uh, pastors that, that support this, I mean, this, this is just uh, it's, it's a right and wrong issue. It's a civil rights issue, and, right. and we use it also as it's a huge economic development issue. Right. You need to be bringing the best and the most talented to Florida. Uh, and whether you're LGBT shouldn't matter. In the, in so the it's a national current. We've mm -hmm. had a major you know, terrorism tragedy that was surrounding that exact issue, mm -hmm. but yet, yet there's no traction in the legislature just because why? I mean, was it just a, 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 there were other items that just grabbed all the oxygen in the room this session? Well, it, I, I, that's a good question, and I think that that's something that it, it depends on leadership. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, if you want to bill heard, you, it'll be heard. If you don't want to bill heard, it, it's going to be and, lost in the committee. Right. And there but there are we, so many other, yeah, I think, priorities well, and so many issues that that you know made it to the top of the list, and some that just absolutely didn't. Right. I mean, you know, gaming continued to be a big conversation. Usually, um, the issue, it, and yes. it was struggling to be up there in the a top five. Absolutely, or 10. and it and it depends on you know which side you're on or who you are representing. Presenting, but it obviously um, was an issue that ultimately had to be addressed by the courts. The legislature now, I think it's been three years, mm -hmm. if not four years, right. uh, because I've worked on the project, um, you know, where there have been many, many conversations, big debates, but um, right. I, I think that the client in this case remains silent on the issue, which was a positive and well, helpful Well, that's them. a great segue. We're going to go into our break, but when we come back, you know, we think of public relations as the message and the voice, but sometimes it's there's it's, it's time to it's, be quiet. Yep. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so yes. we'll be back, and 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 uh, when we come back, we'll talk about when is it time to be quiet, and what were some other uh, amazing strategies that we've seen be successful in the process. Uh, we'll be back with the messengers. And we're back on Capital Dateline with The Messengers. We're joined by three of the leading uh, Florida public relations and public affairs firms uh, here and represented by these fine ladies. Okay, so the, w before we went to the break, we were talking about when is it time to be quiet, right? Kind of the, the antithesis of what it means to be in <laughs> politics. Right, but, right. but how do you talk people through when it's time to be quiet and give us an example? Well, I think it yeah. just depends. Sometimes when it comes to public affairs, you have to give them a reason or an excuse. They'll call you and say, I need some cover. Or they'll call and say, we've got this. This is going to be a leadership issue. There's about four people that will decide. It'd be helpful if you don't go out there and bang the drum. I remember one of my favorite senators back in the day was Senator Bennett, mm -hmm. and he ran a particular <laughs> issue. And he always said, I almost had it. And then they came out and held a rally or a march, and it was the bill they wanted. Right. But every time he tried to do it, they would come out and either make too much noise, or the message was not correct, or it was aggressive and threatening, and he couldn't get a bill passed that he tried to pass. Mm -hmm. So it's perfect examples. We worked with the Everglades Foundation. Uh, you notice a couple years before, we had rallies. There was, there was something going on almost every day. Jimmy Buffett came out, mm -hmm. um, and the bill didn't move. Right. What, what happened this year, still had some advocacy. It was a little bit uh, different, more grass tops, along with grass roots, but the difference was it was a leadership priority. So it just matters how the environment changes right. when it comes to if something's going to move or if something mm -hmm. is not. Mm -hmm. But there's oftentimes you will find that you've got to just let the process run out mm -hmm. and you can actually damage an uh, event by talking too much or saying the wrong thing or even having the wrong message. I, I, agree. I mean, I'll tell you what I, I don't think works and we could all talk about this is letter writing campaigns. Right. I think that's just ineffective. Right. Um, when I, it's it, a staple of what we grew yeah, up on, yes, right? And, yes. and that's not the game letter. anymore. And right. they're form letters. It's the same letter, you know, right. it's written 60,000 ways with different signatures. Right. It's really not going right. to move the needle. I, I think it's alliances. It's associating yourself with um, the people that are credible messengers. Um, for example, I worked just, and we're still working on this with Intrexon. We worked on a referenda in the Keys where um, the company that we represent has a genetically engineered mosquito. Mm -hmm. 
that will help reduce the population of the Aedes aegypti or Zika carrying mosquito. It carries other illnesses. And you know, the community. You've just flown over my head with, with those references, <laughs> but, but keep going, keep going. So, right so the community was opposed to the release of the mosquito, mm -hmm. despite, you know, um, approvals from the FDA. Right. So they um, wanted to vote on the issue. Again, we had to look for the right messengers in the community yeah. that could put people's mind at ease and shared facts. And that was, I think, extremely important when you're dealing with science and health and well-being. Right. So. Well, and, and uh, go ahead, Yeah, Christine. no, I was going to use the example of uh, Uber. We've been doing some work with Uber. And uh, that was an interesting issue. In 2016, you talk about one person and one person yeah. in leadership. You can have the right messaging. I mean, we had everything, economic development, tourism, uh, community partners. Uh, we did a press uh, conference with uh, Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Yeah. Uh, you know, Uber and transportation network companies, you'll Makes see a sense. decrease in uh, drunk driving drunk fatalities driving. because people are, are used to using that platform. So great messaging, but uh, we had a Senate president uh, last year in 2016 that uh, didn't want to hear it. Right. And so one person, the power of one person, power of a leadership. Now, you know, fast forward to 2017, uh, used a lot of those same tactics, but what was different is uh, new leadership, and uh, the constituents, right. they are used to transportation network companies. They yes. want their Uber throughout right. the company. And, and fast forward, uh, House and Senate committees, uh, nearly unanimous in, in both. And as of July 1st, we have access to Uber. Yeah. So uh, you can have the it right just, message, yeah. but sometimes it, it, it's that person. One person can and make a difference, it, and it's time. good or bad. Sometimes it's time. I and mean, we've worked on issues for like two and three years, and finally it's the third and fourth year I mean, where the public process, understands right? it. Right where you know lawmakers embrace the messaging and it just seems simpler to explain and you know the media consumes it differently well and, and you know to 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 me and I, i've had my experience in running coalitions and campaigns is is when it's organic the legislature knows it i mean right. they know when it's people yes. in their district paying oh, yes. attention to their Absolutely. their their uber votes for example they know if it's manufactured but too. but when everyone shows up in yes. t-shirts and they're getting a box lunch and you're like it, it, it's more of something to deal with and that's, that, that's not as the, impactful. The, the you don't want to do that right. you need the real the, the, the real people right. behind the issues mm -hmm. all right so so let's talk about the ultimate new grassroots aficionado right going straight to the public and that's president trump right <laughs> president trump has changed the rules just when everyone thought that tweet is going to sink that campaign. Mm -hmm. He's done. It just made him more popular. Yeah. How, how, how is that trickling down into Florida politics? He has engaged people more in politics than any other president. At least that's what I believe, because people are watching him. It's, it's the, the public. It's the voters. It's the people that support him that are opposed to him. It's the media. Right. I mean, and it doesn't stop. It's, it's interesting. It, it's it doesn't. Fun. And I, I think that's a whole other show <laughs> is talking about that. But sure. for, for good or bad, you know, better yeah. or for worse, he, he tweets what he feels yes. at any hour of the day. Yeah. And that is endearing to some people. Are you going to go to the White House website and look at a communications site to find his press release? No, you're going to go on Twitter and you're going to go at and real you want Donald Trump. And to come to you. Right. And, yeah, and right. you, you, know, you're, you can see it in real time. So the Anybody impact, in Florida, any trends in Florida following well, that lead? That's where we'll yeah. see. I think yeah. you know, we've had quite a few candidates say, well, it works for Donald Trump. Yes, but you're not Donald Trump. Right. So you are not the leader right. of the free world. Tread and cautiously. so you have to tread yeah. cautiously. But I think a few of them think, well, if I make some waves and I make right. some noise and I stand out and I'm a different right. type of elected official, it's going to work for me. Former I think Representative you, Gates. I right. Mean, and we've talked about it. Yeah. Christina yeah. has yeah. said we won't know what happens until 2018. 2018. You just don't right. know. It, you can't yeah. just follow what he it's does. It's almost like it's the not children of that class exactly. or the, the new and leaders of that class. I don't know if you saw Jamie Grant's tweet. It might have been yesterday or t today, but it was picked up this morning where he said, you know, people will be more cautious in what they tweet out if there were duels in place, if we still dueled. <laughs> so uh, he was just on trying to. The anniversary of okay. Alexander Hamilton. So, right, right. It's coming to that. So I, I just thought it was, you know, it was interesting. So it's, you have to be careful. For what we do for a living, it's very unnerving right. because yeah. you can have a client that is out there tweeting, and that is that is on the record that they could actually yeah. make a story based on their tweet. Right. So for someone like us, it's like I remember we've got I've gotten phone calls and said, wait, I'm yes. sorry, they said what on Twitter? Right. And you've got to go find it. And, and have, once it's exactly. there, there's nothing you can right. do about and, it. And that's where the reporters pick up their quotes. They don't they, they don't do. call right. people no, anymore. They, don't they, they monitor the, the Twitter yeah. Twitter well, feed. Well, yeah. and, and that traffic, you know, you've got the Matt Dixons of the world and the Peter mm -hmm. Shorshes and, and even your traditional journalists, uh, you know, from from Miami Herald. And whatnot. I mean, they're on there and they're engaging oh, and they're they're hitting that and and that's a feed that everybody pays and, attention and, to. Oh, yeah. and, and it works sure. to your advantage. And right. you know, those relationships with, you know, the Gary Finance or the Matt Dixons or right. the Peter Shorshes, if you need something and you need to push it out quickly, right. 
um, you know, Twitter is the best way to do it. You and know, you just and give all of those guys are, right. are massively right. followers. So, so okay. wait and see, and, and we're all just buckling up for that next statewide official. We all that, knew that what was going to happen for the presidential, so I'm sure we've got all this figured right. out. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, it yeah. could be exactly right. the way we expect. You know, uncontrolled <laughs> messages. That's the fun of the game, right? It keeps us busy. Oh, right, right. All right, all right. So, so, so let's talk about the millennials that are the the consumers of this. And and you know, going back to Trump, you know, you had Bernie Sanders on the other side using some of the exact same tactics, but the millennials can. It seems they consume their information in completely different ways. And, you know, as we were talking about no letter writing campaigns, right? Our parents and even us, we grew up looking at the letter, reading the editorials. It doesn't seem like that's the game plan anymore. How are millennials, how are you reaching millennials today with, the tools that are out there. Well, I think like we yeah. discussed, I mean, it's yeah. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. all yeah. of theirs are you is writing digital. The messages differently? Short. I think doing them short, short, making it related exactly to them, right. because it is, unfortunately, in that era, what are you going to do for me? Right. And I think a lot the of images. what they the images, connected to right. Trump was, he kept saying, I'm going to do this for you. Right. And the others talked kind of in a bigger area. But, yeah, they want to know what's happened Christina, to them. Yeah, ahead, and, yeah. and, I, and I think, too, it's, it's the audience. I mean, when you talk about legislative messaging, yeah. uh, what legislators are on Twitter? Are right. you doing paid ad on Twitter uh, to reach out to legislators? I mean, we put together a, a, a Twitter account spreadsheet before session, so you follow everyone and we found even some of the freshman members really didn't have a social media platform right. whether on Twitter or on Facebook some didn't have campaign websites yeah. they use Facebook for their campaign websites so as you're reaching out to them are they even on that social media platform how savvy how are they and how do you that? engage in yeah. that well and, and we, we talk about the legislators so much but staff plays such a huge role in Absolutely. filtering that that content in and 99% of that staff sits right in that millennial consumption generation. The question I want to ask you guys is, so the millennials are coming up and they have a whole different, um, at least the marketing folks will tell you, a whole different uh, set, of, set of mores and kind of moral compasses on, you know, pro-diversity issues and just this, this kind of the sacred cows that, that you know, and I'm going to say our generation, but, but mm -hmm. you know, the older crowd kind of grew up with this. Oh, those are, don't mess with those. And these kids are like, if you're not writing a message to me, I mean, how, how are you using these these old, you know, or getting around these old sacred cows and, and getting in with, with the millennials? I mean. Well, and I mean, in, in our case, um, we have a wonderful team of millennials that do just that. They create content. So we tap into our colleagues and know that they're messaging to their peers. Right. And so. We have the luxury of doing right, that. Right, right. So it's peer yeah. to peer, right? That on that, you know, that's tapping that next yeah, generation. Yeah. That's great. Okay, so let's jump into um, the the next question, which is really about um, you're the leading public affairs firms in, in Florida, right? You, you guys represent those firms, and some would say that that space is being taken over by strong and, and successful businesswomen, but but. In our previous kind of conversations, you guys are like, it's not about being a woman, but but what would you say to those people that say the women are taking over? Brad, I would say we've always been there. I'm sorry, <laughs> I don't know where you got your facts, I love but it. I, love it. I think it's a matter of being, you know, at the top of your game, mm -hmm. um, representing your clients well, um, you know, being trustworthy and straight shooters. So. And all of us, have, we, we laugh because we all have had this conversation before. I don't think any of us want to be the top women in the field. We want to be the top firm in the yeah. field. Or I'd like to even just continue to be in the same area yeah. with these you know, very successful young ladies. And competing ladies. is good. I mean, it's, I think it's healthy. Right. But so. I think it also shows, because when I say that, I've had a lot of other young women say, yes, but it is. So if what we do and happen to be women mm -hmm. and strong women is some sort of a role model for young ladies coming mm -hmm. up, I think that's great. Yeah, I, th I think it is, and and uh, I, I think you're right. You want to be the top firm and, and just know, but it, it's, it's all your reputation. Yeah. It's whether you're a man or a woman. I mean, do you produce? Do you are you trustworthy? Exactly. Are you presenting facts to reporters? Are you uh, are you uh, representing your clients to the best of your ability? Uh, your reputation is what you have, and 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 uh, these ladies, uh, we've all built up some some I think great reputations, and and. Uh, uh, I think that that bodes well for the industry and uh, public relations or any industry. Well, you know, w whether it, it's any one of you in the game, when I talk to legislators and leaders in the process, the one thing they tell me about your collective firms is that you guys outwork everybody. And that is, yeah. it's a hustle.com. <laughs> it feels like it's 24-7. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. even when I'm going to sleep, I see your staff online. Did you see this? Did you see this? And, yep. and you know, if you need the news outside, outside of what a news dump cycle will be, 
we always know to turn to your firms to get the latest on what's going on. Thank you. So. Good to hear thanks, thank you. Well, ladies, thanks so much for coming thank you. on thank you. And, uh, and, and joining Capital Dateline. We, we look forward to having you on on, on on the myriad of topics that we know Florida is going to face over the coming months. So, um, so, so keep hitting it hard, and uh, we know Florida's <laughs> companies will continue to, uh, and, and coalitions will turn to you for uh, uh, messaging and leadership. Thank, Thank you. Thanks Thank you. for having us Thanks. here. That's all the time we have for today's Capital Dateline, The Messengers. Uh, tune in with our Capital Dateline online page on Facebook or check us out on our Twitter feed, which is at the FCTA. Thanks for tuning in.